Hey everybody, Charlie here. We are going to make a, a little short section of videos for making a headlight fairing. Um, I'm, I'm stopping on the wiring video, so if you're following along on the channel, um, the wiring harness is pretty much done. There was, there's a couple little connections that still need to be done, um, but I decided to stop it um, so I could finish other projects that needed to get to it. I've already been able to mark on the frame where the uh, zip tie uh, tabs go that hold the wiring in place. Um, went ahead and built the mount and mounted the speedometer. As you can see, it's right there. Um, and so I needed a headlight fairing because I also mounted the headlight. And if you're familiar with the FJ or if you've seen it, it has like this wonky, Full, the frame, the main frame of the bike goes around the front of the uh, the actual fork tubes. So it's kind of protruding out there. And so I made the mounts for the headlight uh, that attached to the, that segment of frame. And so they had these bars that protrude down that hold the headlight in place. So I wanted to kind of cover that up and neaten it up with a small headlight fairing. Um, and this is how it begins. Um, basically, this is the blue housing in foam insulation. If you watch my video on motorcycle um, one-off fiberglass parts, there'll be a link. You'll understand how, you know, the different materials that I use. Um, for this particular one, I chose to do the blue foam um, simply because the expanded foam is much more difficult to deal with because I have so many nooks and crannies and stuff that the foam could actually form in and make it a pain to get it off. So I did it this way. So it's built up excess, just like it would be on anything. It looks kind of ugly, but it'll get whittled down and shaped with sandpaper and with my rasp. Um, so the uh, handlebars rotate inside this frame. So I had to make a standoff right here so the handlebars would be able to go underneath so this part will get built up and then there'll be a nice radius right here. Um, and then of course it'll be formed really thinly around the headlight. Um, and then as you see, it's kind of just bulky and I'm gluing pieces on at a time here. Um, the pieces are, when I add pieces to it, um, I add, I use these T-pins. I don't think I covered this in my other video. These T-pins are just basically like sewing pins, I guess you could say, but they got a T head shape on them. And I picked these up at a local hobby shop. Um, that hobby shop, you know, back in my modeling, RC modeling days, so I built airplanes and I had these. So I actually use them to pin the foam in place until that segment of glue uh, it is dried. Um, this is the Gorilla Glue, it foams out and it dries fairly quickly hour two hours something like that um, i use a water spritzer bottle to spray over the fresh glue because i just added a couple pieces so you can kind of see it right here um, and then it'll it'll foam out and create this bubbling section out here but it trims fairly easy you got to use that type of foam or glue because there's a lot of glues that'll actually eat the styrofoam and that uh, gorilla glue it sands fairly easy it is kind of it's much harder than this, but it still sands fairly easy. But anyways, it's laid up and I'm slowly building it up and then I'll come in and start sanding. I will probably add another piece or two on this surface, but right now I got it taped all in place while I glue these all in here that'll hold it in place where I'll be able to sand it while it's in place. Um, so I'm gonna make this a short episode and then once I get all the pieces all glued on there, I'll come back in, we'll shoot a video, you'll get to see it with all the parts on, and then we'll start uh, breaking it down and sanding it in place. We use all kinds of things like uh, sandpaper, usually a heavy grit sandpaper and a medium grit sandpaper, usually in the 30 range for the heavy grit and around the uh, 200 um, to uh, 150 to 200 grit for my finer stuff, finer work on here. Stuff sands really, really easy. I like the heavier grit because it really hogs it off when you're trying to, you know, and then I use a, a saw blade uh, mounted in here so I can help carve it off. I use a 
rasp. It's got heavy teeth on it. And that's what I use to uh, help hog some of the material off of here when I want to get it really quickly. So we'll touch base whenever this uh, um, stuff is all set up and is all on here. And then we'll touch base back on shaping it out. So stay tuned for episode two.